Hey guys, my James Masellan from Movie Death Blows. Thanks for taking the time to sit down with me today. Yeah. Sure. Hey James. You know, Reed, I'm curious, your character, Gordon Ford, you know, did you try to model him after any talk show host in particular, or was it like a hodgepodge of characters that you kind of took inspiration from? He's he's definitely more of an amalgamation of a bunch of characters. I think uh, young Johnny Carson was the touchstone. He was my jumping off point. He, he, he was uh, early on in my talks with Amy and Dan. Um, he's who we referenced quite a bit, but, you know, Stephen Allen obviously factors in there a little bit. Um, you know, Jack Benny, um, uh, Jack Parr. So in my research, I really, I tried to make sure that I wasn't imitating anyone, um, but I got to have a lot of fun, you know, noticing it's like, oh, you know, the, he, you know, this guy does this, this really interesting thing with his hands and this guy would put on this sort of like on camera voice versus his off camera voice and things like that. And it was, it was great to sort of, you know, Frankenstein all of these iconic late night talk show hosts into this one, you know, ambi very ambitious, driven, you know, narcissist, you know, essentially it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Jason, can you talk a little bit about what the casting process was like for you coming on as Mike Carr? Like, did you and Rachel have this conversation about you coming on the same show as her? Was there ever any animosity between the two of you guys? Animosity? <laughs> Marital animosity? Up here, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it, it happened really naturally. Uh, you know, like Amy, I've, you know, like been around the show for a long time, and Amy had always been saying that she was hoping to find something for me to do. Um, and this character came along, and, and I really thought it was just going to be kind of the, like a little cameo, you know, these those two scenes kind of in, at the end of uh, season four. And then I was really, really surprised when he came back and then kind of had such a presence um, um, this season. So that was, I don't know, it was like a real gift to get to do and like come back and like have part in all the fun that I've been kind of like witnessing from the side for, <laughs> for as many years now. I think one of the best running gags this season is Alex's character just chasing Mike Carr around trying to get <laughs> Midge on the show. How much fun was it filming those scenes with her where she's just yelling, Mike, Mike, constantly at you? It's the best. She's <laughs> so funny. Um, and I know the show is just so fun to work on kind of in general. The, the, script, the scripts are amazing. And like we had so much fun, especially kind of in the office setting, being in kind of our own little bubble. And the space was set up so beautifully to get to do these like really long, you know, shots and kind of like wonders um, throughout and like see the whole space. And so like, I think that's a part of what we love, you know, watch, we literally get to watch Susie run through the entire office set with like, you know, I think there's probably like, and one shot, probably like two cranes, three handoffs, a steady cam. You know, like the the show is super ambitious in that way, and it's just like such a joy to be a part of. Like, what, who gets to do that? It's very cool. You guys had a lot of guest stars on this season. You know, Reed, I'm curious. Hank Azaria is one of my favorite voice actors, one of my favorite yeah. actors of all time. How much fun was it going head to head with him in that episode? Oh God, he's great. He's great. Hank is like he's a very down to earth guy for you know being legend at, at this point in his career and he was just so down to play he like he came in with this guy I, none of us knew what exactly kind of spin he was going to put on this character and he came with such specificity to it that it was just so fun it really it, it brought all the scenes you know it, it injected it with such life and you know he and i when you say go to toe to you know we we, we almost come to blows at one point in one of the scenes and he's just he's so funny there's not a lot of breaking on the show we don't often sort of like you know ruin takes out of laughter but some of his facial expressions sometimes and just like his mannerisms and, and just how cool he is you know it was it was tough to keep a straight face and we're all i i think i struggled you know not just sort of fanboying all over him because uh he's been one of my my heroes for a long time but he was he was a blast to work with and really fun great stories He's got some great stories to tell.
I wasn't sure if he was going to come on and do the Brock Meyer voice or some kind of other 1950s voice, but I, I just love seeing him pop up in everything. He treated us to like every once in a while, there'd be like, you know, one of his voices would pop out in a little gag or a little bit he was doing when the cameras weren't rolling. It was pretty fun. It was cool watching his process too, because the, yeah. you know, the table read, table reads are pretty high pressure on this show, and there's like a lot of pressure to kind of perform and, and, and give Amy and Dan the opportunity to kind of like hear the, the script out loud. And he just like really took his time to find his way in, especially kind of like being a guest star for like one one or two episodes. Yeah. You know, like that's a really hard job, and to like really like take the time to do that. I was like, I was just like, ah, oh, yeah, I forgot that like how important that is, and like and that that's possible. Yeah, you know, comes from the voiceover world too. You yeah, know? like the the one thing they teach you in the voiceover world is it's not about going big or broad; it's about being you know, super specific. Mm -hmm. And that's what he came in with every single thing he had hit, had thought out, which really matches the energy of Amy and Dan because that's how they craft their scripts. So he was a he was a great casting choice. You know, speaking of voice voice acting, Reed, I'm a huge fan of the DC animated stuff and I know you were in Injustice as Oliver Queen and Victor's yeah. as are we gonna see you do any more of that work in the future? I hope so. Yeah, I really hope so. I love doing that stuff now. They've been, uh, it, it's been a lot of fun to be <laughs> invited in that world. You know, my, my kids get a big kick out of the fact that, you know, daddy's, you know, in one thing I'm Green Arrow, I'm a good guy, then I'm Victor Zaj and I'm a bad guy. And then, you know, it's, that's really my happy place is doing voiceover stuff. It's, it, it's a lot of fun. I didn't know I, that. That's oh, yeah. so fun. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a giant comic book dork, so it's really scratching an itch. Yeah. Hell yeah. If, if you look behind me, you'll see all my Marvel action figures back there. So oh, yeah. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jason, you guys do a scene with like the Friars Club roast and everything like that. And it's, you know, it's yeah. you, it's Will Sasso, it's Sean Gunn and Danny Strong. Do you have any behind the scenes stories you can tell of just that whole thing? Because it seems like you guys were having a blast when you were doing that. I unfortunately was because I, I was in the makeup, you know, and it, it, it was just it's so hard to be in all day long. And that sounds like so ridiculous to say, but it's just like you just like have a thing on your face and like just trying to like stay cool and not sweat it off and just like like not let it drive you insane. I, I spent most of the time just sort of like laying down on the ground with a fan. And so I didn't get to enjoy that part of it, unfortunately. We had so much fun, again, like at the table reads and like, and you know, like in the trailers and stuff before, but like the actual doing of it was, God, it was so miserable. It's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I'm out of time, guys. Thanks, guys. I appreciate your time. Can't wait to see what you do next. I'm a huge fan. Thank sure. you. Thanks, James. Thanks.